Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to launch this Moon Explorer 1, though I seem to have neglected one little thing, which is a small inline reaction wheel. After all, the torque in this uh, little uh, probodobodyne octo is only 0.3, which, uh, which should be okay if I don't do anything really stupid, but on the off chance that I do do something really stupid, I would like the 5 torque that is in the reaction wheel, and it's only 0.05 tons extra, so it's probably worthwhile. Anyway, uh, so with that addition on there, let's get going. Uh, what I have to talk about in this episode can be done in orbit around the moon. So let's just get there. All right, here we go. SAS on, throttle up. And all systems seem to be okay. We're trying to fulfill this contract to land on the moon and transmit scientific data from the surface. All right, here we go. So Moon Explorer 1 is underway. I sure hope the 0.05 tons really doesn't do too much damage to my numbers. I don't think it will. I usually build in enough margin to slap on an extra 0.05 tons. One would hope. Anyway, what I have to talk to you about in this episode is going to be how to calculate how much burn time you have left. In other words, how much longer in time you have uh, fuel left over to burn. And also, how to determine uh, how much time you have left until you crash into the surface or something. Uh, so I'll be going through those equations. I'm assuming at this point that I've, uh, I've scared away anybody who's actually afraid of math. So I'm just going to plunge ahead with the equations. And just to be clear, these are numbers that you could get from Kerbal Engineer or Mechjeb but as it's better just to know how it all works out and of course we can develop even more complicated things once we understand these simple equations and I'm saying simple equations because they are the basic ones and of course there are cases where MechJeb and Kerbal Engineer will give you numbers that you're not entirely sure about and sometimes they give you different numbers MechJeb gives you one number and Kerbal Engineer gives you a different number and so knowing the equations sorta of gives you a very quick way of figuring out which one to trust. Uh, you could always work backwards. You don't always have to crunch the numbers yourself, but it's always good to know how the numbers are crunched so that you can uh, figure out whether to trust the number or not. I mean, obviously, you don't want to trust these things bi blindly. Uh, in general, I don't trust anything blindly. So, so yeah, I think that's a good policy in, in pseudo-rocket science, if you will. So here we go, making a nice arc here. So we have to get into orbit first, and then uh, we'll wait for the moon to come up over the horizon. I'm not going to calculate the phase angle, since we have a nifty little rule of thumb to work with. Rule, rules of thumb are very, very good. I mean, uh, there is nothing against rules of thumb, even if you can calculate equations. They're really handy and worthwhile. Okay, that's our first stage. Let's see how things are going. Pretty well. Gonna stick to apoapsis of about 80 kilometers here. Uh, let me do a quick check of how much delta V I have left here. So yeah calculator so I've got 149 divided by 90 is the amount of fuel I have 1.65 let's say and uh, I think it was 3.25 so 3.25 okay so that's what I wanted to know looks like plenty Now, we don't have any way to recharge our electric charge, so I have to be careful about that. The moon is over there, so we're probably going to have to start burning around here in our orbit. Okay, we don't really need to go any higher than that, even though our periapsis is... Uh, well, actually, maybe we do. But I'll wait until this apoapsis to do it. 
it really depends on whether we can start burning for the moon at above 70 kilometers and I think this might be too low all right that will be safe 88 kilometers on this side so let's see now there it is okay let us begin So I just want to touch the orbit of the moon. And that should definitely bring us in, assuming I've done everything right. So let us see. We now depart the vicinity of Kerbin. Cinematic lookout there. And we are now heading towards the moon. I think we should still have enough electric charge. It's going to be a close call though. I wonder why we're not focused on... Come on. Will taking... Nope. Taking SAS, SAS off does not help. Okay. Crash course into the moon. Wouldn't necessarily be a horrible thing, but let's do a radial burn to fix this up a little bit. Uh, are you the right radial? Nope, you're the wrong radial. So you want to go with this blue marker and lift up a bit. It looks like a proper... No, it's not. Okay, it's getting fooled. Okay, there we go. Periapsis there. A little bit higher would do. Okay, that's fine. I don't know if we're going to have enough electric charge. Oh yeah, and uh, transmitting the experimental data takes electric charge. We might be short. Ah, uh, okay. I think we're going to be short electric charge. We're going to have to launch another one of these with more batteries. This is going to do information around the moon. I don't think we've done goo containers high or low, so let's observe mystery goo. Okay. Hmm. Let me keep that data for now. Maybe I should just do a crash course this time. No, let's try and do it right. Let's see how long. I want to fulfill that contract. Let's see how close I can get. Okay, uh, let's retrograde and burn. So I'm not going to talk math here yet. Let me just try this out. This is clearly going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to try and land as soon as we get on the daylight side. So basically on landing on the moon, the practical thing is just pointing at your retrograde marker and burning. You want to get rid of all residual speed with regard to the surface of the moon, not orbit. And of course landing in daylight is preferable. The reason you'd want to calculate how much burn time you have left and how much time you have to the surface is because then you can optimize it so that you burn at the best, uh, you, you don't uh, burn extra you burn at the best possible time. The latest possible time happens to be the best possible time in terms of efficiency. But I'm not going to go for that now. Though I'm probably going to end up being close to it because of just the practical matter of being able to okay the other way. Beat out my electric charge depletion. So 
so we're skimming over the surface quite fast and the first thing we need to do is really kill our horizontal velocity you see if we uh, uh, reduced our vertical velocity and uh, came to a landing we'd still be going so fast horizontally we would not be able to land properly so since we're already so low it's not a big deal to slow down horizontally which means that you're just uh, pointing at the horizon right you can see that my little uh, nav ball the marker is pointing at the horizon now where are we landing now it's a little soft patch here uh, I'd rather land right here actually So we're not going to transmit as much data as I'd like to transmit because we won't have enough electric charge, but maybe we'll be able to transmit some data. So what you would want to do if you want to be super efficient about it is just a single continuous burn. You can see I'm burning in bursts and uh, the best thing to do would be a single continuous burn all the way down and uh, at full power and that way you're not going to be inefficient about it. That's the best way to go. But it's also very hard to do without crashing into the surface as you might imagine. Another problem though, if you're really trying to calculate it out, the problem that you have especially with probes is that you have no idea what your altitude above the surface is. The altitude that you see up there is altitude above sea level. Now once the little uh, retrograde marker is perfectly vertical, you have killed your horizontal velocity and you're on final descent now. And of course if you're going for the optimal situation, your final descent should be uh, as, as low and as close to your final touchdown as possible. I prefer to touch down at below one meter per second. That is sometimes hard when I don't know where the surface is really. Okay, I think I see my shadow. Okay, we are on the surface. We have a trivial amount of actual electric charge left and delta V for that matter. Let's see. All right, well, uh, from the moon's highlands, we leave the sample days open for a while. Go do something else. All right, well, let's transmit that. And I'll probably expend all of our electric charge. Indeed, it did. But we got the contract fulfilled. Just barely. Okay, not exactly the most, uh, the best way of doing it. We didn't get as much science as we would have liked to. And I didn't even get to talk about what I wanted to talk about. So, but let's consider what to do next. Maybe I'll uh, hold off on the calculating burn time and all that for another episode when we can do this properly. Uh, let's go take a look at the contracts we have available to us. Okay, so here we are. We've got some more funds, not much more science. We've got another vir visual surveys of Kerbin. We've got visual surveys of the moon, which is interesting. Gotta send a crew, so that's a little bit trickier. I mean, because the crew capsule is heavier, right? And uh, we don't really have the capacity for it on our launcher right now, I think. Uh, it'll be a close call. I think it's... it's mm, it'd be tight. Uh, science data from space around Kerbin doesn't give much science. 
Just send any, but uh, if we, I only have two contracts to work with, so I don't want to overload it. That's quite a lot. It's just an LV1R. Uh, failure is really expensive, but uh, but we get a lot of signs for that. We just have to activate that part, and the LV1R is very light. Okay, we'll take that contract. It's a lot more lucrative uh, in terms of science than this LVT45 contract in suborbital. Did I miss something about this contract? No, it looks fine to me. Okay. Explore Minmus. Yeah, yeah, that, that I think we can do. Okay, we've got our two contracts. All right, so uh, first thing, let's go with the LV-1R test. Now, we don't have to go very far up with the LV-1R, nor do we have to retrieve it, but maybe it'd be best to retrieve it and everything. So, um, I'm wondering whether to send a Kerbal or not. The thing is, uh, when you look at it, the reaction wheel plus this uh, probe core costs a lot more than just the command pod, right? Uh, just the reaction wheel costs the same as the command pod. So there's that going for it, but on the other hand, there's a Kerbal, and of course, if we were going to retrieve it anyway, we might as well go with the probe core. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable thing, and that's mainly because it's lighter. If we're going to retrieve it, this is going to be requiring a lot less by way of, uh, of engine power. So we're going to say like that. So that'll be our little probe core. We're going to have to have batteries as well. Another thing that we probably wouldn't need to overload on if we were just sending a Kerbal. Now, how big a rocket do we need to test this thing? I'd want to just for the look of it. And we're going to bring it back down, like I said. Now this can be done with uh, LV LV909. Let me check my delta V for a sec. And we're gonna need the LV909's surface ISP. Let's let's have landing legs as well. 2741 to get how high? Uh 20 20 kilometers, let's say. But we have to be going pretty fast. Well, not that fast. Uh, by 20 kilometers, we should definitely be there. Hmm. But we can carry more fuel on this, I think. We'll need more parachutes, though. Still, I'm really in it for the science. So we should be alright. Uh, in terms of... Uh, beating out the actual amount that we're going to get from this contract. We're not going to do it for a loss. Come to think of it, with the parachutes on the side, I don't think I need the parachute on top, but let me quickly calculate this out. Hmm. 2,661. And that's because of the additional parachutes. 2,943. Well, that's better. Let's go with that. Let's see if that works out. We'll retrieve it anyway at the end, so it's all right. Yeah, I'd like a little nose cone of some sort. I uh, would have liked that parachute, but the extra 0.1 tons isn't worthwhile. So this is LV1R test. Let's just uh, deploy the landing struts and take it out to the launch pad. Okay, SAS is on, Thrall is up. Alright, let's go. Gear up. Okay, let's see how our Apoapsis is doing. Pretty good. We need to keep under 400 meters per second. Well, when we get there, we need to be under 400 meters per second then. I can't really expect the planet to do too much pulling down on me. Okay.
Okay. All right, engine test achieved. Got plenty of fuel left. And I'm actually... I'm gonna shut these down. Really don't like the complication of having them on. Incidentally, the LV-1Rs also have a lower ISP than the LV-909, so... More efficient to have them off anyway. When you do have mixed engines in a stage like that, uh, you're going to have to take the thrust weighted average of the ISPs. So you're going to have to multiply the ISP by the thrust and then uh, take the average somehow like that. Uh, uh, not not a procedure I ever do. <laughs> and kind of think of it, well, I mean, the, the, the case where you would have to do that is with the solid fuel boosters. If you're using uh, solid fuel boosters alongside the uh, engines on the main stage, you're probably going to have to end up doing that. Okay, we're below Mach 1. Probably the two parachutes isn't enough to carry the mass with this much fuel in, so I'm going to have to light the engine for a bit. No, no, it's doing pretty good, actually. 5.6 meters per second is fine. Is that like Jeb's hut or something? I mean, what's that little building there? Ooh. Okay, we are on the ground. Let's recover. All right, so uh, we got the signs from the contract. We got our funds returned at a 98% rate. We're up to 300,000 funds now. Uh, let's go to VAB for a sec. So yeah, um, well that was the LV1R test. The other contract we have is Minmus. So let's take a look at our Moon Explorer. And I think this can handle everything from Minmus. Except, uh, and that's mainly because Minmus, it takes a lot less to land on Minmus. And, but not too much more to get there. Minmus is of course Kerbin's other moon. What we really need is a lot more battery life. Lots and lots more. Um, that's a bit of a problem. Yeah. Because uh, to get to Minmus it takes like three days, let's say. It took only six hours to get to the moon, but it'll take three days to get to Minmus. I don't think I have enough battery power here. But I've got science. So maybe we should go to the tech tree to see what we can do about this. Maybe we can slap a solar panel on. Okay, if we take a look here, no, nah, solar panels cost 90 science, not just our puny little 70 science. So we're going to have to accumulate more science before we can unlock solar panels. Maybe we'll have to hold off, well, maybe we should do a Minmus flyby to get the remainder of the science. Uh, let me quickly take a look at how much science we would get just with a Minmus flyby doing that part of the contract. Yep, it says 22. So we get 22 science for that, and uh, so doing the flyby mission, we can uh, do it manned, I think. Uh, or maybe we should, we should just slap a whole lot of batteries on? Hmm, let's see, maybe there's another contract that can get us the science we need. Suborbital trajectory over Kerbin. Okay, I think we can do that. Yeah, let's do this one. And then we'll have the science to unlock solar panels. Okay, so forgive me for not uh, building this on camera, but it's very similar to stuff I've already done. Uh, so I'm using the cubic octagonal struts here. Uh, no, sorry, not cubic octagonal struts. Uh, module girder segments uh, to uh, extend the landing legs below the engine and of course I used a lot of offset and rotate in order to get that looking right but uh, yep it's just a matter of fine-tuning that. So here are the engines that we are scheduled to test on a suborbital trajectory I think this rocket can get up to 82 kilometers hopefully much more than that uh, not orbital this thing cannot get into orbit but maybe I can do with a fewer batteries here I think I've overdone it on that. Okay, so I think we've got everything that we need here. 
Hmm, this doesn't look quite right, does it? It's trying to line up with the landing legs, but I don't think that's really necessary. Okay, I think that will do. I think that will do. All right, let's try this out. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, mm, no, I'm not gonna time warp till daylight because this electric charge is running out. Let's just get on with it. Uh oh, uh oh, no. Oh. Okay. Uh, recover vessel. <laughs> All right, maybe maybe I'll lock the landing struts, huh? Uh, clearly, that's that's not good. All right, let's do that in the VAB. Lock suspension. Surprised it did that. That might be a bad sign. We'll see. Uh, does it look steady to you? Looks okay. Looks okay. All right, let's get on with this. It's just an engine test after all. All right, here we go. Gear up. So again, it's just a straight up, straight down sort of thing. Either we hit the right altitude or we don't. G-force is really building here as we're running out of fuel and I'm just going to let me cut it here. Let's see. How high are we? Yeah, we've, we're, we're way high. We're good. Okay. There we go. Test achieved. And now we have all the signs we need. Okay. Good. Back down we go. Gotta retrieve this so we don't lose funds. Tough to see. I hope we're coming down on the grasslands instead of the mountainous area. Okay, re-entry heat. Or effects at least. And... Parachutes. A little bit faster than I'd normally like to deploy the parachutes, but... That's what the situation called for. Okay, looks like we're about 300 or so meters above sea level on the ground here. So, time up a little bit. 6.6 .6 is a little bit too high for me. I'm gonna want to light the engine for a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I think we just lost some batteries. Okay, let's recover. Probably should have action grouped the suspension on the landing legs. But anyway, uh, contract fulfilled, I think. We've got the science that we expected. So let's quickly go ahead. We got 97% of our funds returned. Let's go ahead and unlock the solar panels. And then in the next episode, I am going to bring you a trip to Minmus. Ah, inline battery bank. Maybe. I'll, I'll consider these later. Alright, so yeah, a uh, trip to Minmus, and yeah, and then I'll discuss uh, how to calculate remaining burn time and uh, whatever else I might think of. Alright, so uh, a rare episode with no equations involved, uh, but we did get some stuff done. We, I think we practically doubled our funds. And we unlock some more technologies. All right. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.